knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. Over the past few tutorials, we've learned about the three largest classes within phylum mollusca, those being gastropoda, bivalvia, and cephalopoda. To wrap up this phylum, we're going to cover the remaining lesser-known classes all at once, those being polyplacophora, scaphopoda, monoplacophora, selenogasters, and caudophoveata. Let's get started with the most diverse of these classes, polyplacophora, also known as the chitons. They are the most diverse of the smaller mollusk classes, making up about 1,000 currently described species. They are flattened dorsoventrally and have a convex dorsal surface that bears seven or eight plates or valves. This is what gives them their name, polyplacophora, or many plate bearers. However, in some species, like the gumboot chitin, the largest chitin in the world, sometimes called the wandering meatloaf, these valves are hidden by its leathery upper skin, or girdle. Most chitons live on rocky surfaces in intertidal regions and feed upon algae they scrape from rocks using their radula. Their radular teeth are reinforced with the iron-containing mineral magnetite. They are well adapted to survive in their habitats. Though they can be regularly pounded by intense waves, they are able to hold fast to the rocky surface using their powerful foot. Chitons are sometimes called homebound or stay-at-home organisms due to their behavior of identifying a home spot on a particular rock that they always return to when the tide is low after they have fed. In addition, most chitons are dull-colored in order to blend in with their surroundings, but some species, like the lined chiton, can be remarkably colorful. Their external ventral anatomy is relatively streamlined. Notice, however, the numerous gills, or tinnidia, that extend around the mantle cavity and line the muscular foot. On their dorsal end, notice that the articulated plates overlap posteriorly and that the body is generally surrounded by tubercles, or marginal spines. One fascinating part of chitin anatomy, missing from this diagram, are their hundreds of eyes, which are readily visible when you zoom in. These low-resolution shell eyes are likely used primarily to detect predators. Each eye is connected to a nerve, but there is no visual lobe in a chitin's brain that can stitch the signals together into a higher-resolution image. Instead, each individual eye forms two separate images at the same time to help better monitor the environment and detect moving shadows. Next, let's discuss class Scaphopoda, often called the tusk shells, or tooth shells. Their glassy smooth shells are somewhat common on beaches around the world, where they are sometimes mistaken for hollow teeth. The shells themselves are often transparent, allowing a glimpse at the living animal inside them. Scaphopods are benthic organisms that can be found from the subtidal zone to over 6,000 meters in depth, so any shells that wash up on shore rarely contain a living animal. There are about 900 recognized living species of scaphopods, most of which are about 5 centimeters in length, though some can grow up to 25 centimeters long. They live their lives submerged in the substratum with their foot, captacula, and radula facing down. The small end of their shell is exposed above the substrate. They respire by circulating water through the mantle cavity, though since they lack gills, the gaseous exchange occurs within the mantle. They feed upon detritus, foraminiferins, and vegetable matter by using cilia on the foot or the mucus-covered adhesive pads of their captacula or elongated tentacles. Next up is class Monoplacophora, which one can probably guess means bearing one plate. Until 1952, when a single specimen was dredged up from the seafloor on the west coast of Costa Rica, this entire class was thought to have gone extinct about 375 million years ago, because that's where their fossil record stopped. Though they superficially resemble limpets, they are not gastropods, nor are they closely related to class Gastropoda. They are small, with a low, rounded shell and creeping foot. The ventral end of their external anatomy is somewhat similar to the chitons, but their internal anatomy is unique in that many organs are repeated. For example, they have three to six pairs of gills, two ventricles, 
two statusists, which is an organ used for sense balance and orientation, four oracles, three to seven pairs of metanephridia, essentially kidneys, and ten pairs of pedal nerves in their ladder-like looped nervous system. Lastly, let's cover the naked mollusks. Both classes of naked mollusks have long been placed in the clade Aplacophora, which of course means without a plate. As of 2022, there still are no confirmed fossils of Aplacophorans, though some problematic fossils exist that somewhat bear resemblance to their modern analogs. Their exact phylogeny with respect to each other and other classes of mollusca has been in flux, with some researchers claiming their classification as paraphyletic, though more recent molecular studies place them as closely related to the chitons. Both classes are found primarily in the deep sea and possess calcareous spicules secreted by the mantle that cover their bodies. Now to get more precise, there are about 120 recognized shellless mollusks of class Caudophoveata. Nearly all of them are burrowers that feed primarily on bottom-dwelling microorganisms and detritus. They feed by lying vertically in the sediment with just their mouth parts exposed and taking in passing organic detritus. They, like most mollusks, possess a radula for feeding, though they lack shells and a muscular foot. In place of a foot, they have scales and calcareous spines that they use for movement. At their anterior region, they have an oral shield with sensory cells that aid in food selection and intake. They are dioecious animals with a single pair of gills. Finally, the selenogasters include about 300 deep-sea marine mollusks that lack a shell and are instead covered by spicules, which appear to differ greatly by species. Some species possess a radula, while in others it has been secondarily lost. Many possess elaborate salivary glands and a vestibular buccal cavity. Many lack gills and respire using simple diffusion and secondary respiratory structures. Unlike the caudophoveata, they do have a foot that is visible as a midventral narrow furrow, also known as the pedal groove. They are bottom-dwelling mollusks that feed on the bodies of cnidarians and tenophores, either sucking their bodily fluids or eating their tissue. Like the caudophoveata, their digestion, ecology, habits, and diversity are still being explored as new species are regularly discovered in the deep ocean. And with that, we conclude our study of phylum mollusca. Let's move forward and continue our analysis of Lophotrochozoa with a closely related animal phylum, Annelida. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.